Hello, we are Yuki Otsuru and David Manzanares. In this chapter, we will explore the application layer and how the application services and protocols within this layer make robust communication across data networks possible. The application layer is the top layer of both the OSI and TCP IP models. The TCP application layer includes a number of protocols that provide specific functionality to a variety of end-user applications. The functionality of the TCP IP application layer protocols fits roughly into the framework of the top three layers of the OSI model, application, presentation, and session layers. The application layer is closest to the end user. It is a layer that provides the interface between the applications we use to communicate and the underlying network over which our messages are transmitted. Application layer protocols are used to exchange data between programs running and their source and destination hosts. Some of the most widely known application layer protocols include Hypertext Transfer Protocol (HTTP), File Transfer Protocol (FTP), Trivial File Transfer Protocol (TFTP), Internet Message Access Protocol (or IMAP), and Domain Name Systems (DNS). The presentation layer formats data for the application layer, and it sets standards for the file formats. The presentation layer has three primary functions formats data from the source device into a compatible form for received by the destination device, compression of the data in a way that can be decompressed by the destination device, encryption of the data for transmission and the decryption of data upon received by the destination. Some well-known standards for video include QuickTime from Apple and MPEG, which stands for Motion Picture Experts Group. Among the well-known graphic image formats that are used on networks are Graphics Interchange Format, or GIF, Joint Photographic Experts Group, or JPEG, and Portable Network Graphics, or PNG. As the name implies, the session layer creates and maintains dialogues between source and destination applications. The session layer handles the exchange of information to initiate dialogues, keep them active, and to restart sessions that are disruptor or idle for a long time. While the OSI model separates the individual application, presentation, and session functions, TCP IP applications incorporate the functionality of all three layers. The TCP IP application protocol specify the format and control information necessary for many common internet communication functions. The TCP IP protocols are the domain name system, which resolves internet names to IP addresses, telnet, that is used to provide remote access to servers and networking devices. The simple mail transfer protocol that transfers mail messages and attachments. The dynamic host configuration protocol that is used to assign IP addresses, subnet masks, default gateway, and DNS server addresses to a host. The hypertext transfer protocol that transfers files that make up the web pages of the web. The file transfer protocol that is used for interactive file transfer between systems. The trivial transfer protocol, that is used for connectionless active file transfer. The bootstrap protocol, that is used as a precursor of the DHCP protocol. It is a network protocol used to obtain the IP address information during boot up. Post office protocol, that is used by email clients to retrieve emails from a remote server and the Internet Message Access Protocol, that is another type of protocol for email retrieval. When accessing information on a networking device, the data may not be physically stored in the device. In this case, a request to access that information must be made to the device where the destination resides. In the peer-to-peer -peer networking model, the data is accessed from a peer device without the use of a dedicated server. This network model involves two parts peer-to-peer -peer networks and peer-to-peer -peer applications. In a P2P network, two or more computers are connected via a network and can share resources, such as printers and files, without having a dedicated server. Every connected end device, known as peer, can function as both a server and a client. One computer might assume the role of server for one transaction while simultaneously serving as a client for another. The roles of client and server are set on a per-request basis. An example is a simple home network with two computers. Peer2 has a printer attached to it directly by a USB and is set up to share the printer on the network so that Peer1 can print to it. Peer1 is set up to share a drive on the network. 
This allows Peer2 to access and save files to the shared folder. P2P networks decentralize the resources on a network. Instead of locating data to be shared on dedicated servers, data can be located anywhere and on any connected device. A peer-to-peer -peer application allows a device to act both as a client and a server within the same communication. Like in the example shown, both can initiate a communication and are considered equal in the communication process. P2P application require that each end device provide a user and run a background service. Some P2P applications use a hybrid system where resources sharing is decentralized, but the indexes that point to resource locations are stored in a centralized directory. In a hybrid system, each peer accesses an index server to get the location of a service store and another peer. P2P applications can be used on a P2P network, client-server networks, and across the internet. In the client-server model, the device requesting the information is called a client, and the device responding to the request is called a server. Client and server processes are considered to be in the application layer. The client begins the exchange by requesting data from the server, which responds by sending one or more streams of data to the client. Application layer protocols describe the format of the requests and responses between clients and servers. In addition to the actual data transfer, this exchange may also require user authentication and identification of a data file to be transferred. Web browsers are the type of client application a computer uses to connect to the World Wide Web and access resources stored on a web server. As with most server processes, the web server runs as a background service and makes different types of files available. To access the content, web clients make connections to the server and request the desired resources. The server replies with the resources and, upon receipt, the browser interprets the data and presents it to the user. Browsers can interpret and present many data types such as a plain text or HTML. Other types of data, however, may require another service or program, typically referred to as plugins or add-ons. To help the browser determine what type of file it is receiving, the server specifies what kind of data the file contains. The three common messages types are GET, POST, and PUT. GET is a client request for data. POST and PUT are used to upload data files to the web server. Although HTTP is a remarkably flexible, it is not a secure protocol. The HTTP secure protocol is used for accessing or posting web server information. HTTPS can be used for authentication and encryption to secure data as it travels between the client and server. HTTPS specifies additional rules for passing data between the application layer and the transport layer. HTTPS uses the same client request server response such as HTTP, but the data stream is encrypted with secure socket layer or SSL before being transported across the network. HTTPS creates additional load and processing time on the server due to encryption and decryption of traffic. Email is a store and forward method of sending, storing, and retrieving electronic messages across networks. Email messages are stored in databases on mail servers. ICPs often maintain mail servers that support many different customer accounts. Email supports three separate protocols for operation. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol or SMTP, Post Office Protocol or POP, and Internet Message Access Protocol or IMAP. The application layer process that sends mail uses SMTP. A client retrieving an email, however, is using one of two application layer protocols, POP or IMAP. SMTP transfers mail efficiently and reliably. For SMTP applications to work properly, the mail message must be formatted properly and SMTP processes must be running on both the client and the server. Its message requires a header and a body. The message body can contain any amount of text, but the header must have a received email address and a sender address. When a client sends an email, the client SMTP process connects with a server SMTP process on well-known port 25. After the connection is made, the client attempts to send the email to the server across the connection. When the server ser receives this message, it either places the message in a local account or forwards the message using the same SMTP connection process to another mail server for delivery. The destination email server may not be online or may be busy when email messages are sent. Therefore, SMTP spools messages to be sent at a later time. Periodically, the server checks the queue for messages and attempts to send them again.
Post Office Protocol enables a workstation to retrieve email from a mail server with PLP mail is downloaded from the server to the client and then deleted on the server. The server starts the PLP service by passively listening on TCP port 110 for connection requests. When a client wants to make use of the server, it sends a request to establish a TCP connection with the server. When the connection is established, the POP server sends a greeting. The client and POP server then exchange commands and responses until the connection is closed or aborted. The Internet Message Access Protocol is another protocol that describes a method to retrieve email messages. When the user connects to an iMac capable server, copies of the messages are downloaded to the client application. The original messages are kept on the server until manually deleted. Users view copies of the messages in their email client software. Users can create a file hierarchy on the server to organize and store mail. When the user decides to delete a message, the server synchronizes that action and deletes the message from the server. In data networks, services are labeled with numeric IP addresses to send and receive data over networks. Domain names were created to convert the numeric address into a recognizable name. Domain names such as Cisco.com or Netacat.com are much easier for people to remember. The domain name system was created for domain name to address resolution for the networks. DNS uses a distributed set of servers to resolve the name associated with number addresses. The DNS protocol defines an automated service that matches the resource's name with the required numeric network address. It includes the format of queries, responses, and data. The DNS protocol communications use a single format called a message. This message format is used for all types of client queries and server responses, error messages, and the transfer of resource record information between servers. A DNS server provides the name resolution using the BIND or Berkeley Internet Name Domain. The DNS server stores different types of resource records used to resolve names. These records contain the name, address, and type of record. When a client makes a query, the server's bind process first looks at its own record to resolve the name. If it is unable to resolve the name using its stored records, it contacts other servers to resolve the name. The request may be passed along to a number of servers, which can take extra time and consume bandwidth. After a match is found and returned to the original requesting server, the server temporarily stores the numbered address that matches the name in cache memory. The DNS client service on Windows PCs optimizes the performance of DNS name resolution by also storing previously resolved names in memory. The DNS protocol uses a hierarchical system to create a database to provide name resolution. The hierarchy looks like an inverted tree with a root at the top and branches below. This hierarchy is formed by the domain names. The naming structure is broken down into small, manageable zones. Each DNS server maintains a specific database file and is only responsible for managing name to IP mappings for the small portion of the entire DNS structure. When a DNS server receives a request for a name translation that is not within its DNS zone, the DNS server forwards the request to another DNS server with proper zone for translation. The different top-level domains represent either the type of organization of the country of origin. After top-level domains are second-level domain names, and below them are other lower-level domains. Each domain name is a path down this inverted tree, starting from the root. DNS is a client-server service. The DNS client runs the service itself. The DNS client, sometimes called the DNS resolver, supports name resolution for other network applications and other services that need it. Computer operating systems also have a utility called NSLOOKUP that allows the user to manually query the name servers to resolve a given hostname. This utility can also be used to troubleshoot name resolution issues and to verify the current status of the name servers. In the figure, when the NSLOOKUP command is used, the default DNS server configured for your host is displaced. In this example, the DNS server is dns-sj.cisco.com, which has an address of 171.70.168.183. The name of a host or domain can be entered at the DNS lookup prompt. In the first query in the figure, a query is made for cisco.com. 
the responding name server provides an IP address. The dynamic host configuration protocol service enables devices on a network to obtain IP addresses and other information from a DHCP server. This server automates the assignment of IP addresses, subnet masks, gateway, and other IP networking parameters. The alternative to dynamic addressing is static addressing. When using static addressing, the network administrator manually enters IP address information and network hosts. DHCP allows a host to, com to obtain an IP address dynamically when it connects to the network. The DHCP server is contacted and an address requested. The DHCP server chooses an address from a configured range of addresses called a pool and assigns it to the host for a set period. On larger local networks or where the user population changes frequently, DHCP is preferred for address assignment. If a host is taken off the network, the address is returned to the pool for reuse. Various types of devices can be DHCP servers when running DHCP server software. The DHCP server is most medium to large networks, is usually a local dedicated PC-based server. With home networks, the DHCP server is usually located on the local router that connects the home network to the ISP. DHCP can pose a security risk because any device connected to the network can receive an address. Also, the DHCP server ensures that all IP addresses are unique. When a DHCP configured device boots up or connects to the network, the client broadcasts a DHCP discover message to identify any available DHCP servers on the network. A DHCP server replies with a DHCP offer message, which offers a lease to the client. The offer message contains the IP address and subnet mask to be assigned, the IP address of the DNS server, and the IP address of the default gateway. The lease offer also includes the duration of the lease. The client may receive multiple DHCP offer messages if there is more than one DHCP server on the local network. Therefore, it must choose between them and sends a DHCP request message that identifies the explicit server and lease offer that the client is accepting. Assuming that the IP address requested by the client is still available, the server returns a DHCP acknowledgement message that acknowledges to the client that the lease is finalized. If the offer is no longer valid, perhaps due to the timeout or another client taking the lease, then the selected server responds with a DHCP negative acknowledgement message. The file transfer protocol was developed to allow data transfers between a client and a server. To successfully transfer data, FTP requires two connections between the client and the server, one for comments and replies and one for the actual file transfer. The data transfer can happen in either direction. The client can download data from the server or the client can upload data to the server. The server message block or SMB is a client server file sharing protocol developed by IBM. It describes the structure of shared network resources and it is a request response protocol. This protocol describes file system access and how clients make requests for files. SMB messages can start, authenticate and terminate sessions control file and printer access, allow an application to send or receive messages to or from another device. It is mainly used for providing shared access to files, printers, serial ports, and miscellaneous communications between nodes and a network. Trends like bring your own device, access anywhere, virtualization, and machine-to-machine -machine connections have made way to a new breed of application. It is estimated that approximately 50 billion devices will be connected by 2020. This is leading towards a world of intuitive connections between people, processes, data, and things on the network. Internet will allow people and companies to interact in unimaginable ways. Objects will be able to connect, receive, and send information to users and other connected objects. This new wave in Internet development is known as the Internet of Things. Over 100 million vending machines, vehicles, smoke alarms, and other devices are already sharing information automatically today. Thank you for your attention in watching this video. Hopefully now you better understand how the application layer works in networking.